This episode is brought to you by thescalemodeler.com. Hey guys, welcome back to part 5 in the Ferrari build. Uh, this time it's just a tutorial on how I do my interior floking. I use a tea strainer, some humbral enamel paints, and uh, most of the time I used my skill production anthracite uh, colored interior floking. So basically what I do, I, uh, I don't really tend to mask off, but when I do, I do that prior to painting, of course. And then uh, remove the masking after painting, and then apply the floking on top. But in this case, I'm just doing it without masking. I uh, apply the paint very, very thick, and then uh, level it out a bit and make sure that everything is covered I want covered, and then move on to applying the floking. Now I'm doing this in sections. You can do this all in once, but uh, the paint tends to dry a bit and uh, you don't want that. You want the paint to be very, very wet, else the floking won't stick as well. So now the area you want covered in floking is all painted. I put the floking into the tea strainer and then sprinkle it on top of the painted section. Be very generous with this, and after applying enough, just press it in slightly with your finger while it's still wet, and then just let it sit for a couple of minutes, go do something else, and then start removing the excess material. I do this by heavily tapping and blowing off the excess, but I couldn't really film that because you wouldn't see anything, but this is how it looks basically. and then you just move on to other sections. I did the exact same section on the other side and later on I'm going to do the floor mats also in two separate sections. Now also because I'm not masking it off I can move around straight away and uh, continue on to the next section but if you were to mask it off then mask off first and mask off everything and then paint it in sections or in once, that's up to you, but I do recommend to do it in sections because the paint dries as I mentioned and if it dries it leaves a bit of uh, yeah, hazy spots that are not really completely covered. So now the rear is done and I'm moving on to the front sections, also doing this in two parts. Um, you can see that these are a lot bigger of an area than the rear parts were, but that doesn't really matter. Just apply the paint heavily, make sure everything is covered, and uh, just move on to uh, applying the floking. Now I am not going to uh, cover this complete section as I'm placing the seats on top of this and with the glue the seats won't stick as well uh, if the area around it is floked and also the area underneath the seats won't be seen so I'm not even going to bother painting it and floking it. It's also important to when you're doing this in uh, more than just one section, the, the section where the paint meets up, try to leave that at an edge. It, it won't really hurt when you're uh, not doing it on edge, you can do it in the middle of a panel 
and still have a nice result but there will be some sort of a line in between or some areas that will be thicker but that's just uh, the case of getting a hand on it and knowing how to do it and just be comfortable with it try some cup a couple of different methods of how you want to do it do it in once do it in twice maybe even in four sections like I'm doing it or maybe even in five by doing the center console last or first or to just try it and see what works for you this is just what works for me you might also be wondering why I'm using uh, enamel paints instead of glue or acrylic paints or some type of other paint this is what I found out works for me it dries slow and the floking sticks to it really well now I've also tried it in different colors and different brands but umbral works for me and the black is the best results I got so far other colors from umbral I have not had uh, as big of a success with but that's just a matter of trial and error I guess now you can also use white glue or wood glue but for me I found out it didn't work but you could use it and uh, see if that works for you Now you can also see that I am using a white piece of paper underneath the area where I'm working. This is to catch any of the excess material. As you can see it's all bunching up in the middle. And when you're finished you can just uh, make a little fold in the piece of paper and put it back into the container or bag or uh, in whatever it came with your cloaking. But that's just a handy tip, else you'll have a lot of other trash, plastics, glue and other stuff in it. Not that that really matters as you're straining it through the cheese strainer, but it's just a little bit easier and to keep it a bit cleaner. that's pretty much it for other project updates and in between photos check us out on Facebook questions or suggestions about this video or anything else post a comment or shoot me an email and as always thanks for watching hope to see you guys next time